Hey everyone, Fire here, and today I'm going to be bringing you my Artillery Ballista Raider Guide for Patch 3.20. Some of you guys are probably wondering why we're playing Artillery Ballista Raider. That's a very fair question. It pretty much just comes down to the fact that Artillery Ballista has really good DPS scaling inherently on the gem, and we didn't really know that in the past because no one had really taken the time to do proper projectile testing. So about a month ago, I did around three hours worth projectile testing with my mod Invecta. We now understand how the gem scales and what sort of things people were doing in the past to actually make the damage weaker. Okay, so anyway, long story short, once you're at 10 projectiles and seven totems, which doesn't require very much investment at all, you're sitting at around 1,400% DPS scaling. To give you just a comparison that maybe makes sense to a lot of people, Cyclone is sitting at 177% DPS scaling. Uh, so this is like many, many times stronger than Cyclone. If you even compare it to a two-hit Spectral Helix on patch 319, that's only clocking in at 550% DPS scaling. So this is a build that just has really good damage, but it's also kind of got good clear. You can do bosses on it, that sort of stuff. It's pretty well-rounded in that regard, and that means that we get to allocate a lot of points on our tree towards defenses and taking care of things such as spell suppression, ailment avoidance, evasion cap, all that sort of stuff. There are two different versions of the build that I've been playing around with, and this one that we're looking at is the armor version. I'm going to be providing the PBs for both anyway, but this is one I kind of recommend to people who want to play it safe. So this just solves all of your defensive needs very conventionally. You have a very healthy amount of evasion, you have a healthy amount of armor, and that armor isn't solely reliant on flasks. So once I remove my my armor from my flasks. I'm still sitting at around uh, 17.5k armor, which is pretty good. We have capped spell suppression. We have an okay amount of chaos resistance, but you definitely want to look to get more if you can. You have a lot of movement speed. That's pretty good. Obviously good EHP and Fizz Max hit over here because we're running uh, we're running some forms of damage conversion, I believe, on the we're running 12% on the body armor and 8% on the helm for a total of 20% physical damage uh, converted to elemental. We're also running three endurance charges so that's another 12 physical damage reduction on top of like all the armor and all the other stuff we're getting so uh we're also ailment immune i believe so we're solving ailments with avatar of the veil in conjunction with the 20 percent here and boots is covering the last 30 percent off the top of my head so yeah the only real unique items that you need to worry about are your two tamings you need to get a rain of splinters which should be pretty cheap considering it's being added to the pool of items that you can get from a corrupt should actually be cheaper on 320 than it has been in the past uh and then you might need to spend a little bit of money on this stuff but i've used like only tier one eldritch implicits i've only included the eldritch implicits that i think are important in the first place uh and yeah so not really going to break the bank here most likely don't don't hold me to that i, I really can't tell the future but yeah so that's pretty much uh that's pretty much the build now the other variation probably carries a lot more risk to it if you are at all interested in leak starting this build i really wouldn't recommend doing this unless you're very experienced as a player so the coil version of the build uses pyroshock clasp and lightning coil in conjunction with a bit of uh conversion on the helm to convert a very very large portion of your physical damage into elemental damage it solves your physical damage needs much more efficiently than the armor version does and this version of the build also manages to get much higher dps as a result of having a few extra points on the tree to spare we also go for this setup with our ascendancy where we prioritize avatar of the chase since everything that we're getting from veil we're already getting from other sources we're using purity of elements to solve ailments and yeah, that allows us to go Avatar of the Chase. Now, I'm going Avatar of the Chase here, not because I give a damn about the Onslaught effect. I only really care about the 10% more chance to evade attacks. It gets us very close to the evasion cap. I think on my day three setting, we went through it on stream. I simulated on my day three setting. I believe this node is roughly equivalent to about 50,000 evasion for me right now, or something ridiculous like that. That's how much extra evasion you get by stacking this on top of a high evasion character. It's massively increasing my EHP. So yeah, obviously, uh, I'm a big fan of this, but I wouldn't really recommend it unless you really know what you're doing, especially because I have been told this is a tier two unique and may be very expensive if a lot of people want to buy it. It's pretty cheap this league, but it could be expensive next league. I really don't know. And I don't know if you want to take the risk to bait. Like, do you really want to have no physical damage reduction up until you buy a tier two unique? I, I don't know. I wouldn't recommend it to other people. So I would... If you're really interested in playing this build, play the armor version. Uh, don't play the lightning coil class version until I do. And if it goes well for me this league, I'll recommend it next league, but I really don't know how it's going to do. 
All right, let's talk strengths and weaknesses of the build. Um, the strengths of this build basically are that you get to benefit from playing an overtune skill gem. That means that you can allocate more nodes on your tree to solving your problems. You can just play the game. You don't have to worry about ailments and stuff like that. You can see this Drox that I'm versing it has 80% delirium on it, 26% increased mon monster damage, 100% extra fizz as lightning, and I'm tanking hits, no problem. I feel the defenses on this character are pretty adequate. I am very hesitant to call it tanky since against elemental spell damage, it's just not really anywhere close to something like what a Jug or an Inquisitor is going to be able to achieve. So I'd be lying to if to you if I told you it was tanky, but the defenses are definitely adequate for pretty much all of the content in the game. We got this to wave 22 simulacrum on stream uh, on this level of investment, which is pretty crazy. None of my league starters in the past have uh, been able to do that on this kind of investment. So, and it's pretty good that it's a bow character, I guess. It's got a decent amount of movement speed. You can see the clear speed in some of the clips. It's a uh, pretty standard for a bow character. It's a radar. Of course, it's going to have good movement speed. I think really just the damage is, if anything, the thing that's lacking the most. And the damage isn't really a problem because you're playing an overturn skill gem. If you feel like your damage is a little low for the content you're doing, you can always juice your damage up very, very, very easily. And you can even just reallocate some life nodes on the tree if that's the way you're inclined to play. I'm not anymore. I really like playing more tanky characters nowadays, but if you look at the PUB and you think I've gone a little overboard on the defenses, you can always play around with that and fix the, that up yourself. Now, there are some weaknesses to talk about that I think are very important. A lot of the loot that your character drops drops off screen if you are going as fast as possible. And this can kind of be a problem if your filter is is not putting icons on your minimap, you're just going to be losing a lot of loot. Uh, I've actually, uh, I, I didn't realize this until I went over one of my VODs and I did some backtracking and I found a whole pile of loot and I went back and looked and realized it wasn't on my minimap and I had only discovered it by accident, which meant I had been losing a lot of loot without realizing it which is pretty bad. So make sure you fix up your filters if you're gonna be playing this build. Um, another big weakness of this build is that it's pretty untested. So obviously like two months of testing has gone into this, but testing is testing. It hasn't been played in a real league start. So can't say I've tested it in a real true environment that you know we can actually take anything meaningful from. So if you're gonna play this build, I really recommend watching the showcase that I've linked in the description below. It gives you a very real understanding of the limitations of this build and the POB that's uh, being used for it is used in all the clips and it's not to show off that the build can do this content it's more so that you can look at the pub and make up your mind for yourself maybe you're looking at the pub and you think like it's really good that this build can do that kind of content with that level of investment and maybe you want to play the build on the other hand you might look at it and say like this is actually a really big risk these items might be expensive and that what i'm seeing on the screen does not look particularly impressive compared to what i'm used to playing so and maybe in that case you don't want to play it it's better off that you figure out you don't want to play it now than next week so please give the showcase a look if you have any any interest in playing this build at all i'm making no guarantees and no promises about its performance you i think you really have to understand that i'm testing it too you know like i can make a lot of claims about how good this build is after i've actually played it in a league and i have i've succeeded with it and i can say it went well but if it doesn't go well i'm abandoning this build as fast as possible and moving on to the next thing so yeah i think it will be good. i think it'll be good but no promises you know you can always tune into my stream i've been testing this every day on stream uh, we've, we do, we've done pretty much like all the content in the game pretty extensively, Maven like multiple times back to back. It, it hasn't really had any problems, but if you're someone who only watches my YouTube and doesn't tune into my stream, you know, you, you're probably really not up to speed about what this build does and how it works and all that sort of stuff. So try to get educated if you want to play this build. You know, I don't want to be <laughs> held responsible for you guys messing it up or anything like that. So yeah, do your due, dil do your due diligence before playing this build. Before we wrap things up, I just want to give a big shout out to Grimro. The build was initially his idea. I was a total doubter. I didn't think it had any potential, but he kind of helped me see the light on that. And after I did the hit rate testing and the math on it, I realized he had a point and this skill probably has much more potential than what a lot of people realize. We're going to both be playing Artillery Ballista this league. However, we're going to be playing different versions of it. Probably just best for the community. If you look at how much Lightning Strike has been min-maxed over the past year as a result of so many people getting their hands on it and playing it and testing it, I can't imagine that's not just going to be the best thing for this build as well. If you like this video, just remember to like, comment, or subscribe for a chance to get 50% off your next order of Super Male Vitality.